three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with a very, very special video. We got the top ten soldiers in anime. Cool. Hey, Amen. We say it all the time. What a time to be an anime fan, but. What a time to also be a subscriber of this channel. I'm not going to lie. It's always a movie when we get to do these. But especially this one, I'm not going to lie. This list is very different. Very different. And on one hand, it was somewhat easy to make. But on the other hand, it kind of wasn't. Just because there's a lot of soldiers in anime. There's a lot of soldiers. And we say it all the time. The list is fluid, but we're going to see how fluid this list is. But just rolling into my number 10, you know, they say God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. And that thing probably just carries on throughout the entire list. But as far as number 10, it was kind of in a different way just because that anime is kind of a different kind of anime for a soldier to be existing. But Man, was he just hold time and time and time and time again? But we might have the same persevere? ten. We just might. Like I'm not gonna lie, this young soldier is someone who will low key eat your heart in a sports anime that you wouldn't Ooh. expect. But at the end of the day, boy, is he a soldier? But at number ten, we have Samura. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When I tell you. Like, and this is a different type of hold. Like, usually when yeah. an anime character gets hold, it's on some, like, literal shit. You know what I mean? Like, something happens yeah. to something in their life or whatever the case may be. Samura gets hold by the anime itself. Like, they just do not let him be great. And Hell yeah. no matter Hell what yeah. happens and what obstacles in his path, and there was a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? He always persevered through it never deviated from his path, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was almost hurtful just to see him continue to struggle even after breaking through. The moment he broke the one barrier, there was another one right there. But he never stopped. He kept it pushing, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, it's actually very special to see. And especially just because it doesn't necessarily have to be, like, OC traumatic shit for it to be considered... Or for you to be considered a soldier. And I think Samura is a prime example of that. Mm -hmm. Especially just because, man, does that man be going through it. Hell but yeah. at number nine, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, that's trauma and then some. But, hey, that also is probably going to be a common theme throughout the list. But when you want to talk about this little nigga, he had it. He had it bad. And the worst part is... He didn't really have a choice, at least not at first. But at the end of the day, as it kind of progressed, he's the only one who could pilot that shit. So he really didn't have a choice. But at the end of the day, he's definitely a soldier, literally and mentally. Like, at the end of the day, at number nine, I think Sinji is one of the greatest soldiers in anime. Ooh. That's a good one. That's a good one. I didn't have him on my list because I didn't think about him, but that's definitely a very strong soldier. You know what I'm saying? Like, Shinji, literally the entire, from the moment he started piloting uh, Eva's to the end of the anime, it was all psychological stress. Like, the whole yeah. anime. Right. And, and he carried that bit. Mm-hmm. And it's like... There were so many instances, like, he literally decided, yeah, I'm done with this shit, and still came back, still mm -hmm. got the job done, still saved humanity. Like, damn, Bro, that's a good... This nigga's body literally shit? disappeared. Yeah, like, I'm kind of I'm bad. pretty sure he's only in middle school. Like, that's definitely a soldier, a young one, but that's definitely a soldier. I'm kind of mad at myself I didn't think about him, but by default, honorable mention, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But shit, my number nine, you know what I'm saying? This character, the anime was really about him versus himself. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like super dark, but he struggled to find himself. And 
it kind of seemed like he was somewhat overthinking in a way, but it also wasn't. There was a lot of things going on in his mind, and it was a very uh, psychological anime, not on the darker side. It was more so lighthearted, funny at times, you know what I'm saying? But this character, he really had to find himself, and at the end of the anime, you know what I'm saying, he finally got to kind of make peace with himself, you know what I'm saying, and really find his identity and who he wanted to be and what he wanted to do. But at number nine, I have Shigeo Kageyama, a.k.a. Mob. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I respect that. Mob is a soldier, and he's not only a soldier, he's a dog, too. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Just to keep it rolling, at my number eight, I could have easily flooded from this anime alone. I could have easily flooded. But I didn't. I kept it to just two niggas from this anime. This is the first nigga from it at number eight. Like, I'm not going to lie. He is a literal soldier. And he's been a soldier since a young age. Like, I'm not going to lie. When you look at the shit that he had to go through, that's not normal, especially for him to stay sane. That's not normal. But at the end of the day, that's just a more of a testament to just how amazing of a soldier he really is. But at number eight, I have Kakashi. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Like, Hell it's yeah. crazy seeing how Kakashi was all the way until we got his backstory. And then seeing the shit that he went through, it was insane. Like... The fact that he was able to be so, like, calm and kind of nonchalant about the things that were going on after going through what he went through is truly Bro, a testament to he went through some real strength. shit. Like, this nigga went through some real shit. Like, watching people that he loves get slimed out or Vice slime versa, themselves. Like, killing people that he awesome. cares about. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah, whoo! Especially when he was that young doing it, you know what I'm saying? Like... And he didn't even catch a break. The same shit happened on his first mission with Team 7. Mm -hmm. Like, nigga slimed Haku. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, man, talk about PTSD. Luckily, he like, didn't suffer from it, but it was literally the same thing. He's crazy. It's the same shit. But I, I buy the fault respect that, you know what I'm saying? Kakashi definitely is a soldier. And you're right, there's a lot from Naruto. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot, like... It's crazy. I really could have flooded. Hell yeah. Well, shit. My number eight, you know, I, I kept it to just the main character, but it could be both of them. Truth be told, they basically are joint at the hip, you know what I'm saying? But I just kept it to the main character for the sake of this. Like, this character, when you want to talk about going through something at a young age, it was definitely traumatizing, not only for them, but to me as a viewer. And... This scene in particular immediately screamed that he was a soldier. On episode one, like, let alone everything else that they did throughout the anime, you know what I'm saying? But at number eight, I have Edward Elric. And I, I would have said Ed and Alphonse, but he I just kept it to Ed. Like, they're, they're literally nah, together could've. all the time. They went through the same, like, you know what I'm saying? But I just kept it to nah, Ed. Like you literally could have. You're going to hear Edward soon on my list, so by default, I both respect it, and, I mean, you by default could put it out, too. Yeah, yeah. But when you want to talk about Ed, I'm not going to say too much for now, but that is by default a soldier. Like, mm -hmm. he went through a lot of shit at a young age. Hell yeah, and looking at that scene I was talking He's about, still like, young. after the whole thing with the human transmutation and Hawkeye and... uh. You know what I'm saying? Mustang came to visit him and stuff. And he had that look in his eyes, that fire. Like, after going through something like that, to have a fire in your eyes, like, that was just, that. that's what made Ed one of my favorite anime characters. Just off of, off episode one, I was locked in. I respect that. I respect that. I'm not going to lie. Like, I just got to feel damn because you're going to respect my number seven. <clears throat> It's just, damn, that nigga is kind of early. But 
I that's just the testament of how much I really love and respect him. Like I'm not gonna lie, at number seven, this guy is more than a soldier. He's a dog. He's everything. But when you want to talk about that soldier mentality, he's the walking embodiment of bullshit comes my way without me asking for it. But I rise to the occasion and persevere through. That's one of the greatest soldiers if I've seen it. Then you want to talk about how strong he is, not just physically, but mentally. He's a juggernaut in both aspects. But at number seven, it damns me to say him here. This is why I say the loose the list is kind of fluid. At the same time, it's not though. But at number seven, I have Ichigo. Woo! Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, like it's a jam-packed list. I'm not gonna lie, it's a crazy list. See. But- the reason why I was smiling through that whole explanation is because we might have had the same seven. That's why I was like, you know what I'm saying? Just trust me, that's not that crazy. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Like, that's all I'm going to say on that, but just speaking on Ichigo. You're going to hear him real soon by default, but I by default respect it. Like, Ichigo literally, like, even just when you think about what a soldier is, like, they get drafted to the army. They don't ask. Yeah. A lot of times, they don't ask for it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them do, but a lot of them, they don't ask for it. They get drafted to it. So, all the bullshit that comes their way, they just have to deal with it. They're not asked to get thrown in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's literally Ichigo in a nutshell. And then when you want to talk about mentally, no words need to be said. I'm going to get into that in a second. But just know I, by default, respect Ichigo at seven. You got to, bro. Like, that nigga is amazing. He's a walking embodiment of just rising to the occasion. Like, we say it all the time, Ichigo is one of the realest niggas in anime. And the biggest reason for that is just because of how he just keeps walking his way through bullshit. Like, he rises through that shit. He's a soldier, bro. Like, Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he didn't break. And when he started to break, he had his other soldiers around him. I'm not going to lie. Bleach is full of soldiers, but Ichigo is definitely the biggest one. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, just jumping into my number seven, this is the reason why I say that's not that crazy. Like, it sounds crazy to say him at seven when hey, you want to talk about I, I, I how amazing how amazing of a soldier they are like, and the storm that they've weathered, but... The list is jam-packed, and it is very fluid, you know what I'm saying? But at number seven, this character, like, it's it's a different case because they ha- they weather the storm with a very small circle. It's not like they have everyone just helping them along the way. And they do help. It's not like they're just completely alone. But for the most part, they are. And they had to earn that. They had to earn the respect. They had to earn that before anything, you know what I'm saying? And he was able to do that and change the hearts of those that, you know what I'm saying, had wicked thoughts in their minds on multiple occasions. But at number seven, I got Naruto. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie. I kind of just knew just because you said Ichigo wasn't that crazy. Yeah. And by default, I respect it because Naruto, you're going to hear from me very soon. Like, that is a definite soldier and then some. And, I mean, we did say you could easily flood with soldiers from Naruto. You Mm -hmm. could easily flood. But, in my opinion, when you want to talk about the biggest soldier from Naruto, it's by default Naruto. Hell yeah. Well, Well, for the most part. Like... That's just the kind of dog he really is and the type of shit he embodies from a young age, too. Mm-hmm. From a real young age. Hell yeah. But, shit, just to keep it rolling, you already said him, but just to roll back into him, at number six, I have Edward Elric. Like, I'm not going to lie, the list is fluid, but at the same time, it's really not, especially the way how we're getting to that top five territory, but... Looking in at my number six, I'm not going to lie. Edward is one of the greatest soldiers in anime from a young age, too. Like, bro, I had to put him over Ichigo. Like, it was hard for me to do that. But at the end of the day, he's a hard nigga to watch. Like, you kind of already said it, but he had that fire in his eyes from a young age after going through what he went through, which 
most people probably wouldn't be able to respond that way. I mean, that's not just any shit they went through. And I mm -hmm. think they were like six when it happened. Like, I'm not going to lie. Edward is definitely a soldier, let alone just watching everything that he did in the anime, not just the backstory. That's what makes him even more of a soldier, in my opinion. Like, that nigga is a dog, and I had to put him at six. Hell yeah, you know, I by default respect that, you know what I'm saying? And we may as well just throw Alphonse in there. They're literally joint at the yeah. end. Like, it's Ed and Al, you know what I'm saying? Dynamic duel. But by default respect that being at six, you know what I'm saying? Ed, like, what was crazy about how he had that fire in his eyes was because the shit literally just happened. Like, it wasn't that long before Mustang and Hawkeye pulled up. Like, it was like a, maybe a couple days you know Hell yeah. Like, Hell yeah. They they lost limbs. Al lost his whole body and they didn't let that shake him. That just that alone speaks volumes. Then you want to talk about everything else that they did and everything else that they went through. It was, it was truly amazing. You know what I'm saying? By default respect that at six. But you're by default gonna respect my number six because you already said it, you know what I'm saying? Just to jump into it, at number six, I got Ichigo. Okay. Like, Ichigo yeah, okay is a dog ass nigga but he's a lot more than that you know what i'm saying when you want to talk about his mental battle like he was literally at war with himself since the soul society that was like the first i don't remember exactly when the soul society started and he started doing the little like training shit i think that was probably around like 35 40 but it's continued on throughout the entire anime you know what i'm saying and it's still continuing to this day. There's so much that he has to learn about himself and his past. And yeah, all of this coming together, all of the trials that he never asked to be thrown into. Now, he's literally the hope of the whole soul society. Like, yeah, he didn't symbol, ask for that. He, he's the symbol of hope. Yeah, he got thrown into the situation. Now, all of a sudden, he's the savior. Like, that's just a mm. testament to the, the growth that he's shown in the soldier that he is, you know what I'm saying? So I had to put him at six. Especially for when you want to talk about just all the bullshit that comes his way. Like, you know, one of the things that's interesting about Ichigo is he has insanely strong opponents, but no matter how strong his opponent is, the strongest one is literally his own self, and he's still stronger than that. Like... Mm -hmm. You like you said, he was at war with himself the entire anime, and he's by default the strongest version of himself because of it. It's actually very amazing to see, which is why, like, once again, he's one of the strongest soldiers in the anime. Hundred percent, hundred percent. It's it's by default like just amazing to see, especially when you want to talk about Ichigo. But staying in the big three for my number five i'm not gonna lie top five top five, top five. you already five. said it and i did say it too naruto has a lot of anime characters you could put here but again naruto himself is the double og and the biggest soldier in naruto so at number five i have naruto like i'm not gonna lie naruto is a goon bro just from a young age seeing him Bro, he didn't act. You want to talk about not asking to be thrown into your situation. He didn't have a choice for Karuma, but it by default was a hat. It was by default a L on him before it was a W. Mm -hmm. Like, he had to go through hell before he could use Karuma. It really wasn't until near the end of Shippuden, until he finally tapped into Karuma's power. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie, Naruto really embodied the life of a gin jerky living with a demon inside of him like before karuma was a friend he was a demon inside of him like that shit was not good for him then you want to talk about the villagers and the people in the village like and all the other ninjas a lot of people were on this dome piece like i'm not gonna lie naruto again there's a lot of soldiers in naruto but when you want to talk about going beyond the backstory and looking at what Naruto embodied throughout the anime, there's not too many characters I can say that put more on their shoulders and kept going. So I would have to say Naruto is definitely my soldier at number five. Hell yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, 
In Godzilla King of the Monsters, there's a quote from Dr. Serizawa. He said, in order to move forward past our trauma, we have to make peace with the demons who created them. And that's literally Naruto in a nutshell. Like, Kuruma was put into him as a baby. He didn't even know he had the motherfucker until he was a certain age. Like, and then all the way to the end of the war, basically, Kuruma was more of a hazard than he was a help. Like... And he oh, had yeah. to he had to make peace with Kuruma in order to gain that power, and then it became like a dynamic duo situation where Naruto was the top of his verse and undoubtedly one of the strongest in Naruto. You know what I'm saying? It, and let alone going even further than that, becoming the strongest. You know what I'm saying? Like definitely respect that pick being number five. You know what I'm saying? Naruto is easily one of the strongest soldiers in anime. Say. Easily, but just jumping into my number five, five and four for me is really tricky because oh. both of these characters are insanely strong soldiers, and I didn't really know which one to put where. Oof, but I decided to put him at five, you know what I'm saying? This character. When you want to talk about trauma, witnessing bloodshed and death and destruction and carnage, this character's seen it all. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of similar to the Ed situation. Seeing the look in their eyes in that first episode really made them one of my favorite characters off the rip. You know what I'm saying? Like, after the tragedy happened and seeing what they did with that fire up until the end, because while they were tripping, but... It was truly amazing to see just battling through adversity, you know what I'm saying? And it ended up flipping the script on the entire verse, literally, you know what I'm saying? But at number five, yeah. I have Aaron Yeager. Ooh, that is, you know what? I'm so happy you chose him because I'm pretty sure I don't have him on my list. But at the end of the day, he's someone who I was thinking of, and that's not where I thought you were going. But at the end of the day, Aaron is for sure one of the greatest soldiers in the anime. For sure. Like, Hell yeah. that's a really great pick. Like, that man, after seeing his mom get killed and then having that rage inside of him build up and turning it into saving his own people. Now, as I said, again, at the end, he was tweaking. But, yeah, yeah. Like, there's only yeah, so, was, like... I mean... There's only so much you can do with that type of... They like, forced his hand. He was tweaking, but at the end of the day, they forced his hand. Yeah, they forced his hand. Like, it's still Team Aaron in this bitch. What are you talking about? But, like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Hell yeah. Had to put Aaron at five. Okay, that's a really good pick. And by default, that's going to be one of my honorable mentions. But just to roll into my number four, I'm not going to lie. The first face on my Mount Rushmore. There's a lot of soldiers in the anime, but... From here, the list orders, I just stamp because number three, I low key want to put at number two, but I can't. So, yeah, it's stamp. But damn, number four is crazy too because this one is a personal favorite soldier for me. In fact, he's kind of relatable as hell just because he's a soldier. Like, I'm not going to lie, at number four, I have Kaneki. Like,. Mm. Kaneki is a dog, bro. Kaneki is amazing. Kaneki been through a lot of bullshit. You want to talk about not asking for your situation? That nigga was just trying to go on a date, bro. Got turned into a ghoul by the end of the night. Like, it was a different kind of origin story. Then you want to talk about the rest of the anime. Like, Kaneki went through a lot of tragedy and just a lot of shit. Mentally and physically, especially just living inside of a world like that where you're half ghoul and you're half human, meaning you don't fit in in either side of the world. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, man, Kaneki was definitely a walking soldier. And for a good part of it, he was Dolo. But he's definitely one of my favorite soldiers in anime, and I had to put him at four. Okay, okay, okay. By default, respect it. You know what I'm saying? Kaneki... Like, as you said, talking about not wanting your situation or being forced into it. I mean, that brother just wanted him some pum pum. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And he got slimed out the same night. And his whole world got flipped upside down. And 
being half and half between ghoul and human, he had to kind of make peace with himself, and that was visibly hard to do. Like, it wasn't something that we had to just kind of guess at. We could literally see it. Like, the struggle that he went through trying to fit in both sides, and he just couldn't do it. And I might watch so it was Google it was either. a good thing he had that coffee shop, you know what I'm saying? Like they yeah. really helped him out through a very difficult transitional period, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of that, as you said, he had to do by himself and he was able to rock out and do it. So I by default respect that, you know what I'm saying? Now oh, my number four kind of hurts. Because I really love this character. And he's a soldier like shit, but I can't put him higher. Yeah. Now, it might sound crazy putting him at four, but when you hear the other three, it'll make sense. But this character, when you want to talk about fighting through adversity, like, the amount of times this character, when you really think about it and really break it down, the amount of times he gets his ass whooped, and then gets up and then gets whooped again and then gets up and gets the dub. It's like, wow. Like, Tell them about it. There's so many times where it's like, damn, nigga, just throwing the towel. But it's like, he got that Rocky Balboa mentality. You know what I'm saying? It ain't over till it's over. Like, and all of that is for the sake of others. You know what I'm saying? Like, that selfishness. This character is very underrated. For their mental strength, not just their physical strength. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, the rating in general. At number four, I have Luffy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. That hurts to say. It really like my heart just dropped because for it's me, the fucking go. For me, I don't have him on my list, so this is amazing for me. Like, I love that you have him at four. Like. I'm not gonna lie, that's a very under I was kinda battling if I could count him as a soldier or not. Like he definitely is a soldier, but that's all the more reason why he's underrated for how much shit he goes through. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I was battling with it is because he casually carries the load. Like yeah. usually it's visual and characters if they're a soldier or not. Luffy, you gotta actually dissect it. Like he casually carries and fights through adversity casually mm -hmm. like that's just more of a testament to how amazing he really is he's definitely a soldier and if i included him oh boy he would have gave my list hell but i'm <laughs> by the for respect him on your list hell yeah like his the work he puts in as you said it's so casual it's like it's not clear as day like everyone else on the list is mm -hmm. like but the the load that he carries and his mind is, as I said, is very underappreciated, like underrated, you very. know what I'm saying? Because just because of that, like the amount of burden that he carries, it goes unnoticed because he doesn't show it. And that's something that's pretty admirable about him, you know what I'm saying? I had to yeah. put him at, at four. Now, I respect that. I respect that. <sighs> you know... We are in the Mount Rushmore's. Like, it really shouldn't feel like we're putting characters too low. Like, that was four. This is about to be three. But at the same time, he's not number two or one. So it feels like I'm undermining him. Like, it feels like I'm putting the nigga so low here. But again, this is top three. First or second face in the Mount Rushmore. But I'm not going to lie. At number three, this guy is a dog bro easily could have been two or easily could have been one it's just my number one and two i think just by default have to be over him for me but when you want to talk about this one give him a few more seasons and that may change like he's already at number three with only two seasons like when you want to talk about being a dog being a soldier he definitely is both but at number three i have thorfinn like I'm not going to lie, Dorfin is amazing, and he's one of my favorite anime characters of all time. But a large reason for that is because of the relatability -ness. Like, he started off as a savage, and, well, he got turned into a savage, and a large part of that is because of the adversity. Mm -hmm. But that was, only, that was his way of adapting to the crazy-ass environment he was thrown into after witnessing his dad's demise. Like... 
I'm not gonna lie, Thorfinn is a soldier and then some, and he had Askeladd kinda, but he only really had him as a mentor. I wouldn't really say he had niggas in his corner like that. So when you want to talk about Thorfinn's life, at least up until now, it was always kind of wicked, but he pushed through and then he made it to the farm. He turned being sold into slavery as one of the greatest blessings in his life, just because of how he used it to turn his entire life around by cleaning up his mentality. That's rare. Like, we always talk about it as a greatest 180 standpoint, but we don't talk about the environment that he did the 180 in. Mm -hmm. He did the 180 in bondage while being a slave. Like, that in alone deserves a huge testament. Like, it's just a huge testament to just how amazing of a soldier he really is. But, yeah, I had to put him at three. Wow. I really didn't expect you to put him at three. I thought he was going to be two or one. That's it, that's very interesting. Now I'm when curious. you hear the other two, you'll get it. Now I'm curious who's at two and one. Like whoa, you you probably already have one of them. Yeah, I, I know I have one of them. The question yeah. is the other one. But I by default respect it, and you're going to hear his name very, very, very soon. You know what I'm saying? Like Thorfinn's a G, and when you want to talk about what he was turned into and then becoming a product of his environment and still being able to break the mold, like, mm -hmm. especially witnessing how he did it, like, going through that, it was basically PTSD that he had, like, from everything that he did when he was turned into a savage, you know what I'm saying? Like, to be able to break out of that and completely flip his whole life in that environment is truly admirable. He's definitely one of the strongest soldiers. You know what I'm saying? We're going to yeah, get to that in a minute. But my number three, this character is amazing. And a lot of people, I'm not going to say the character is underrated because hell no, he's not. Hell no. But he's underrated in the aspect of being a soldier. You know what I'm saying? Like, the little things that go into what makes him who he is is what he's underrated for. And it's a, it's a no better time than now to point it out. You know what I'm saying? But at number three, I have Vegeta. Now, Vegeta is a dog. And everything about him is yep. about his pride. Vegeta got his pride crushed so many times. Like an uncountable amount of times. And no matter what happens... Not only was he able to swallow his pride on a couple of occasions and push someone else forward, but he was able to bring it back and never lose that fire that he had. You know what I'm saying? Like, not once did he give up on his grind to become the strongest in the universe. Still to this day, he's still trying to become the strongest in the universe. It's just unfortunate he's not the main character. But the work he puts on, the work he puts in cannot be understated. You know what I'm saying? Like... Vegeta's yeah. just a G, bro. I got I had to put him somewhere out there. Like, oh no, no, for sure, for sure. Because we're gonna keep it rolling. Like, you have him at three. You ask who oh, I have. Oh, okay, Orphan. okay. At number two, I by default have Vegeta. Like, I'm not gonna lie. You literally just said it. Vegeta's a G, and I think you're a hundred percent right. When you want to talk about everything that goes into his character, is underrated. His pride, his ambition, his willpower his determination, and let alone his mental fortitude. Like, Vegeta is a dog, and most importantly, he's a soldier. Like, when you really analyze his life, he didn't get free from Frieza into an adult. He just flipped the narrative and perspective of it because he was a dog-ass nigga under Frieza. But he had his life turned upside down the minute Frieza came and blew his planet up. Mm -hmm. Like, Vegeta is a dog and then some, but... Even when you want to look at the journey throughout uh, Dragon Ball, just being number two to Goku, that ambition to be great. Like, it's very easy to overlook Vegeta's personality and not necessarily underrated, but kind of at the same time underappreciated. Like, I think Vegeta is very underappreciated, and I by default have him at number two for just greatest soldiers in anime. So I by default respect him at your number three. He definitely deserves to be on the Mount Rushmore for soldiers. Like, soldiers? 
That's yeah. almost his category. Literally, like, literally. That's almost his category. When you want to talk about the mental mindset of a soldier, it goes beyond just having trauma. Like, we said it already with Samura, just to say it again. It goes beyond having trauma when you want to talk about being a soldier. Vegeta mentally is the walking, like, image of a soldier. Hell yeah, hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it makes sense now why Thorfinn was at three, you know what I'm saying? I was wondering who that number two was going to be. It makes perfect sense, like, wow, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? But you had him at three, I had him at two. At number and two, it makes sense. I got Thorfinn. Like, Thorfinn, when you want to talk about his turnaround, like, everything before that that you already talked about, and, and even the turnaround, but, like, everything before that, like, season one, basically, Thorfinn turned from a innocent little kid into a war machine because of what he saw. That's just a, yeah. that's just a showcase of how something like that can really change you. And especially at an age where a lot of these characters on our list went through a certain type of trauma and it's a testament to their resilience as well. You know what I'm saying? Because they just showed us like something that you witness like that at that age can really do that to somebody. You know what I'm saying? And Thorfinn went through it and was kind of on the bad side of it. When you wanted to look at how he turned out from witnessing that shit, he turned into he a war two model. Crucibles. Hell yeah. Like, so the, the way he was able to bust himself out of that, as you said, he was in bondage when he did it. Like, he had nightmares, PTSD. Like, he literally, like, literally went to hell. Yeah. And was and... like, yeah, hell no, I, I can't be there. Like, that's not where I want to be. And he was able to turn his life around, you know what I'm saying, change the people around him as well. Like, somewhat unintentionally. Like, he hell just yeah. changed so drastically that they by default changed. Like... Thorfinn is a dog. He's a soldier by default. You know what I'm saying? I had to put him at two. And I couldn't put him at two because of who I'm assuming is both of our ones. But Yeah, just by default. We're going to roll into that very soon, too. But, you know, you already said it for Vegeta. I'll say it again. It makes sense that you have Thorfinn over Vegeta. Because vice versa, Vegeta, I, I kind of already said it, but my two and three I was battling with. Yeah. But... Well, you want to talk about Thorfinn. I think the fact that he did his 180 while being a slave is definitely underappreciated. Like, slavery can be counted as another crucible, but he already went through a crucible. That man went through two crucibles in his very young life, and he did his 180 in the second crucible. Mm -hmm. When you want to talk about Thorfinn's life, it's, pretty, it's just crazy. Like... He literally went from a savage to a pacifist. But it goes beyond that because he's still a soldier even now. He even showed it. Like, he can get busy still. But it's even beyond that. Like, the nigga is literally a soldier. So, I by default respect that. Because, again, I think Vegeta is perfect for when you want to talk about what a mental soldier looks like. Mm -hmm. Dorfin has that mentality. Like, and I think he still does even after changing. Like, you can see it in him. He's just still a different person. But Hell yeah. he's still a soldier, so I respect that. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? But shit. Ooh. At least just to go into some of these honorable mentions real quick. I'm not gonna lie. My first honorable mention This one is interesting because this might be one of the most Fucked up shits I've ever <laughs> witnessed with my eyes. And it's so crazy that we're only really on chapter, I think, three or four. But at the end of the day, this man is such a soldier that we're already able to put him on the list. And maybe if we were a little bit deeper, he probably would have actually made the list. But for now, I had to keep him as an honorable mention. But... My first honorable mention is Agni from Fire Punch. Mm. Yes. Like, <laughs> shit. Like, so when you want to talk about some uh, fucked up shit, like, their world was already fucked up. Like, Agni's sister, who burned alive, oh, man. didn't even get to witness the world before what it was. 
Like, she was too young to even know what that looks like. It feels like she was reading about it in books. Bro, this Agni nigga was there. His village would by cutting off his arm. It like Agni was there. He knew what the world was before this shit, and then had to adapt to this shit. Like to where there's no food. Like he has to cut his arms off, regrow it, and cut it off again multiple <sighs> times in a day just to feed his people his own flesh. Watch them get, bro. He burned alive for so many years, like. He wasn't born with fire powers. He inherited that fire punch power by burning the hell alive. It's just he had regenerative power, so he wouldn't die. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many years it was, but it was, it was a like lot. Ten like, years or some shit. Yeah, that nigga was literally just laying there burning alive for ten years straight until he was finally able to harness the power. He's still burning alive. It just doesn't hurt him, so now mm-hmm. he can control it. Like. I'm not gonna lie, Fire Punch is really <laughs> fucked up, and we may have to pick it back up. But wow, wow, what a soldier! Uh, yeah, like I feel like there's no way he doesn't make the list if we read further than that. Like, yeah, because we didn't get anywhere in that shit, and he's already an honorable <laughs> mention. Like, <laughs> yeah, nigga, he's burning alive right now. Like, yeah, he never stopped. He just got used to burning alive. Like, just yeah, imagine that's getting... actually wicked, the more you think about it. Imagine burning alive so long that it don't even hurt no more. That's actually crazy. And then fun. continuing the walk to get your get back. Like, I'm really curious to see where his mind is at. Like, we definitely got to keep reading that shit. We don't even know if he can run. Like, there's a chance that it still hurts if he tried to run. Like... Like, it's actually crazy. I mean, I would assume he can just because he can literally do that fire punch shit, but still. Yeah. But. That's definitely a good one. You know what I'm saying? But my first honorable mention, I was really battling whether to put him on the list or not, but I got Deku. Ooh, yeah, that's one of my honorable mentions, too. Yeah, like, Deku, when you want to look at his... uh trials and tribulations there's not a lot of trauma but again like you said trauma doesn't just it's not just trauma that makes you a soldier it's not just trauma like in a in a world where everyone has some sort of special ability deku had none like he was as average as average can be but he was still a hero you know what i'm saying like he was still a soldier and all might recognize them for that like gave him the best court you know what i'm saying and he hasn't wasted his opportunity. You know what I'm saying? He took that opportunity and made the most of it. You know what I'm saying? And then fast forward to season six, like Deku or yeah, season, yeah, season six, like Deku literally left everybody to protect them, even though he's the one they all want. Like Mm -hmm. he's the one that Shigaraki and all for one want. And he decided to leave and fight everyone by himself to spare everybody else from getting hurt. Now, in hindsight, that's fucking crazy, but just that's just a, a testament to where his mind was at when it comes to protecting people and saving people. Like he's even thinking about the pro heroes and his classmates that he's already been to battle with. Like I don't want y'all getting hurt. I don't want y'all getting killed. Like I'll yeah, shoulder like, that. I'll shoulder that by myself. Like yeah, like that's it, kind of the big thing when you want to talk about Deku. Just. All the shit he sold, or all the shit that he shoulders. Like, again, it's not just trauma. Like, it doesn't just, like, we're going to keep emphasizing that because I think a lot of people associate soldiers as just simply only trauma. Like, when you look at all the stuff Deku fights through, it's adversity. Like, it's adversity on top of adversity from the minute he got the quirk even before the quirk but once he got the quirk it almost got harder Mm -hmm. like it just got way harder and like it was probably the hardest quirk to master in the show at least to get it to where it's at now he He was was breaking his fucking fingers just to use the quirk i've never broken a finger before but i know that shit hurt and he was breaking this it wasn't just a simple break he was breaking the shit out of him like they were like in a imagine. like damn near in a million pieces type broke, and he did that every time, imagine. every single time he used it, he broke a finger. And then in the tournament, he would break a finger, break all of his fingers, and then break them again so we could keep using it. 
Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie, he's definitely a tough soldier. But another soldier is, from my last honorable mention, Yusuke. Like, Yusuke is someone who I really wanted to put on the list, but as I really just started looking at it, there was just no room for him. But, again, Yusuke is a dog-ass nigga, and he's definitely a soldier. He definitely embodies a lot of, like, again, it goes beyond trauma. When you look at everything he pushes through, he keeps the same mentality. He's really a baby Vegeta, Mm -hmm. but he's just, in his own rights, a different kind of character. But... There's a lot of characters on this list. And if I had to sneak one last honorable mention in, it'd probably be Tanjiro. Yeah, like, by default, you know what I'm saying? They're, they both went through... I mean, Yusuke literally died. Like, yeah, to, to save a little boy that didn't even need to be saved at the end of the day. Like, just looking at what he was before he died, too. Like, it almost... He kind of seemed like the world was out to get him. And... He didn't realize how everyone actually cared for him at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? At least for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Oh, nah, yeah, and that's real. He, he used that to fuel him when it went to his spirit detective work. You know what I'm saying? And he and he excelled at it for their sake and continuing to keep people safe and continuing to work. You know what I'm saying? He's by default a soldier. And Tanjiro especially. Like, Tanjiro went to hell and back. He's literally literally fighting demons. Like, yeah. It, it doesn't get tougher than that, especially as a person with... You know, your special abilities, they're dog... They're like, it's dog shit, but they're literal demons. Like, the shit yeah. is hard. <laughs> like, but I buy the fault, you know what I'm saying? Definitely great honorable mentions. My last two, the first one, just as you said, Naruto has a lot. One Piece also has a lot. And my first one is Nami. Like, looking at what she went through uh, for her, her That's people. A good one. You know what I'm saying? Joining the people that enslaved her people and trying to work and steal from pirates. That's a dangerous job for anyone, let alone a little girl. Setting out to sea by herself and trying to raise enough money to buy her people back. Like, and she didn't even tell them about it. They just knew by default. But trying to shoulder that burden, you know what I'm saying? That in itself made her a soldier. And then, of course, even after joining the Straw Hat, she put in that type of work and started to believe in people again. You know what I'm saying? Hell so, yeah. No, nah, that's an right. underrated one. That's a very... One Piece has a lot, and that's a very underrated one. Hell yeah. And the last one, I said Denji. Just because looking at where Denji came from, like, he had yeah. a debt that wasn't his. It was his father's. And... He was stuck having to pay that off, even though he had nothing. Like, he was literally homeless, living in a shack with a mattress on the floor with no sheet on it. Like, his only friend was a devil dog with a chainsaw face. And when you look at that circumstance and the mentality that Denji had, he was never tripping off his situation, even though it was that terrible. Like, it never seemed like Denji was in bad spirits. Like... Yeah. In the worst situation, you, like, he was homeless, had nobody with him except for Pachta, and had a million-dollar debt when he had zero dollars. Like, he literally basically had negative million dollars in his account. Yeah. But not once did he, like... It, I don't even remember seeing him frown at all. Like, and that's the perfect situation to do it. So I would have Denji as an honorable mention. Nah, that's some real shit. That's some real shit. Like, Denji is definitely a young soldier and maybe just one of the youngest ones, just like Thorfinn. But, you know, just to bounce out of honorable mention territory and roll into both of our number ones, like, it's kind of obvious by now, especially if you are watching this video. Hit that sub button if you already haven't. Yes, but sir. just to roll into the king of soldiers, we both have had number one guts. Yeah, like, you know, all of the characters on our list have walked through storms. And they've walked yeah. through their storm and came out the other side. You know what I'm saying? It's their personal crucibles. Guts' mm. crucible never ended. His storm never ended. It's his life. He's stuck with it. He's literally branded with it. Bro, this, 
like the berserk world itself is the crucible yeah. especially after the especially after the solar eclipse mm -hmm. like he's literally branded on his neck with his storm like he cannot escape it he cannot go to sleep and escape his storm mm -hmm. yeah but his storm do... follows him in his sleep mm -hmm. and, and what does he do he keeps it pushing every single time no matter what's in his way no matter what big ass apostle comes up he slays that motherfucker and keeps it pushing mm-hmm like, I gotta say, Berserk's really motivational in that aspect, too. Like, don't get me wrong, that's a common theme throughout the list when you want to look at all the other mo uh, soldiers. Like, they're motivational in that reign or that regard, but Guts is a whole new, different type of motivational just because he is literally a soldier. Like, he's literally going to war his entire life, but he keeps pushing through. He didn't ask for it, so definitely didn't, but... He definitely fights through it. Mm -hmm. And then even looking before the eclipse, his life was never great. Like, even when he found the band of the Hawk being sold off to that dude who did what he did to him as a little kid. Like, he had to fight to earn his pay and fight to earn his living. Like, they didn't let him eat unless he killed niggas on the battlefield. Like, he never had a great life. But he finally started to turn around just to get hit with that whole ass shit. And now his life is just... He's just back in the storm again, and it will never end until he finds Griffith. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Guts doesn't complain at all about the situation he's in, even though it was not his fault in the slightest. Griffith was just tripping. You know what I'm saying? And he never complained, like, why me? Or say this is someone else's fault except for Griffith, because it literally is. You know what I'm saying? And instead of crying and complaining and giving up, he just keeps it pushing, searching for his ultimate goal, which is to kill him. You know what I'm saying? Guts is not only one of the strongest, well, the strongest soldier, but he's also one of the realest niggas, as we've said multiple times. You know for saying? sure. For sure. Arguably the realest. Arguably the realest. Like, definitely. But, hey, man, that's our top ten soldiers in anime. Let us know your top ten or your top five or your favorite soldier. Hell yeah, hell yeah, vice versa. Let us know what other top 10 lists you want to see, you know what I'm saying? We're open to hell suggestions. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section, you know what I'm saying? But, hell uh, yeah, it's been a minute. Hell yeah, it's been a long-ass minute. And also, unrelated to this video, but let us know any other animes you want to put us on to, you know what I'm saying? We'll sneak it on the channel, you feel me? Like, put us on to some gas. We know y'all got that shit. Stop being hey, you guys have you guys have low key put us on to some shit before. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But hey man, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that bigger subscribe button if you haven't already, and turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss our next top ten list or any of our other special videos. We drop straight bangers on this channel, so make sure you guys tap in with us. With that being said, make sure you guys click on our description. There will be two links waiting for you. One will take you to all of our socials, Sons of Tokyo on every platform. The other one will take you to our Discord. You feel Come me? on in. Come on in. You know what I'm saying? Join that Discord. Come vibe out with us. Talk about anything. Anime, not anime. Sports, movies, it don't matter. But uh, yeah, man. With that being said, SOT out.